This is the Late Round Podcast with your host, JJ Zacharisa. JJ Zacharisa. Phillip Rivers landing in Indianapolis should help things for that offense in general in fantasy football. You can feel more confident with someone like T.Y. Hilton. Maybe Paris Campbell ends up emerging. Jack Doyle should have a nice floor. But I think the biggest impact that we could see there is with the running backs. I always try to be level-headed when it comes to looking at historical positional data and how it relates to certain coordinators or even quarterback tendencies. What I mean by that is... When someone is saying something like, this coach doesn't like using his tight ends, it's very, very important to first look at the type of personnel that that coach was working with before you just avoid that coach's tight ends in the fantasy draft. It's no different than how I feel with the Tom Brady narrative that I talked about earlier. Does he like the tight end position? Maybe. But you can't ignore the fact that Rob Gronkowski is one of the best tight ends of all time. And that when Brady didn't have Gronk last year, we saw that team's tight end target share plummet. So take this all with a grain of salt. It's not everything, but this is something, I think. Since 2011, here are where the Chargers have ranked in running back target share per season. Second, second, sixth, 14th, third, 14th, 10th, third, and first. That's all nine seasons where they ranked in the top half of the league. Seven where they were top 10 and six where they were top six. Clearly personnel matters here. Rivers has played with good pass catching running backs but there's still been some rotation of who those running backs have been. There have been coaching changes, and there have been personnel changes at other positions. In other words, the one constant throughout that entire period has been Phillip Rivers. Logically, there might be something to this. And if there is, even if it's a slight bump, there's a bump in target share projection to both Marlon Mack and Naheem Hines. Mack only had 17 targets in 14 games last year. But if you look at his routes run data, according to Pro Football Focus, that number doesn't make all that much sense. Last season, and this is according to Pro Football Focus data, but last season, targets at the running back position correlated to routes run with an R-squared of .87. The two are very highly correlated. That's not shocking. It makes sense. If someone's going to run a route, if they run a lot of routes, they're probably going to see more targets. On average, a running back saw a target on every 5.2 routes run. Based on that number... Austin Eckler overexceeded in targets by the highest margin. His routes run told us that he should have had closer to 70 targets last year when PFF had him at 104. Melvin Gordon ranked 10th, where he had 14 more than he should have had based on his routes run. You know who was fourth from the bottom? That's right, Marlon Mack. Based on his routes run total, he should have had 18 more targets than he had. The only running backs ahead of him were Todd Gurley, Carlos Hyde, and Ezekiel Elliott. So I'm intrigued by what this could do for Marlon Mack, as long as the Colts don't draft a running back. Phillip Rivers should help him out a lot. My projections currently have him setting a career high with 28 receptions, and it's easy to see that number rising.